Welcome to the CEN Show, the voice of the world community. On Monday, two days ago, we had a nice show on Conscious Corner, and uh, we had a, a very significant guest, and I want to share that with everybody. Let me share it. So here's the show right here, and the guest was Lisa McNair. She's an author. And the name of her book is Dear Denise, Letters to the Sister I Never Knew. Her sister was one of the girls. Her name was Denise McNair. She was one of the girls in the 1963 bombing in Birmingham, Alabama. So her sister is, is an author and she's promoting her book. And she's uh she's very active in the in uh the community in, in uh Alabama. So that was a real good show. I encourage everybody to check that out. So let me introduce myself. I'm Roski Mascani, and I would like to introduce the guests, uh the guests in a few minutes, but I want to acknowledge the panel. We have our grandmaster teacher here, Professor Amin Ra. We have a few guests. Welcome, welcome. We have a few guests that are, are, are that our guests invited. So we have a, a, a brother named Mac here. And then it's a few other people that I don't know. We have uh Johnny, we got DERP, and then we have James P. And then also we have another one of our, our master teachers here, Brother Machinda, that's on the line with us all the time. And he's out of uh, Louisiana. So this evening, we have Brother Straw. He's an impressionist and a comedian and also an educator. And he's been on our show three times, but he's been on other times with other guests, like his, his family been on a few times, and he he's uh, participated with them, which was a real good. We had a good outing with him and his family. His brother Kwabana and some of his sisters, they are they're related to uh Geronimo Jijaga Pratt, which is a former Black Panther. Uh, pris uh he was a political prisoner and he's very popular. So the family is very, very talented family and in, in, in the struggle, just like he was. So Brother Pratt is going to preview his show this evening and his show is called the straw show so brother pratt welcome back thanks for coming on a short notice and uh tell us about what you're going to be doing here when well, your show for starts thanks for having me brother rosk uh anytime anytime i can fill in i would do so instead of having to wait and when well, you was, was going to book me a couple of months down the line i'm like can you slide me in before that? All right, Wednesday. All right. <laughs> so anytime a uh, chance I get to advertise what's going on, we'll take advantage of it. What we have starting this year is The Straw Show, my own podcast. Um, still ironing out some kinks, but um, we did one little introductory show on M3 TV, which you can download on your Roku TV or smartphone or smart TV. Um, and the guy that's helping me facilitate on that medium is Mac, and he's on now. I invited him on here. Uh, maybe we can talk about some things that we're going to do down the line. Uh, I heard you reading some of the people that's on. Derp is my sister. She's been on before. Johnny is my cousin-in-law. If that's Johnny, I think it is. Um, I sent a few people the link right quick, so some of them chimed in. James P is my oldest brother. Uh, Monty, he's living up in Seattle. He did a lot of shows on cable. So anything like this, he, I'm sure he's interested in. He might even start doing his own Zooms again. He had a lot of people come in um, uh, Compton College. He brought in um, Ra Um Nefer Amen, who wrote the Metu Nete. A shake em, a shake em. You see, you have to understand how to use the right side <laughs> of your brain. What's yeah. up, Dick? Hey, all right, man. Yeah, I had a connection problem with my phone. 
the Zoom on my phone doesn't work, so I had to get it on my desktop. So <laughs> look at him. I see you with the Star Trek emblem back there. I mean, this is my oldest brother, you guys. He's he's been to the into this stuff. He was doing shows when we was on public access at a Lone Beach. You still got some of those on tape, right? Yeah, I still have some of them. There's a few of them um, actually uh, on YouTube. Uh, yeah, that's there, but that's been yeah some years ago. Uh, I haven't even looked at him in a long time. So <laughs> yeah, he had himself transforming like the transporter room, and you know, with the with the, the green screen and disappearing, and like he was being transported up out of there. Like, look at him, look at what it. What are you up. talking about? I was into it. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, for the show. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, earlier shows. Yeah, at public yeah. access. Yeah, captain's uh, log. Captain's log. Start date twenty five thirty five point yeah. seven. It's yeah, yeah. I, I was I was doing some some uh, studio uh, special effects stuff with the switchers and everything on there. Uh, a lot of it was analog that <laughs> we used at that time, you know. Hey, just it's switching still, over to digital and you know, so it's yeah, still, public access. <laughs> but his his thing was more on the Afrocentric tip, much like you, brother Rascani. Uh, my thing is going to be more sports, but it's not going to be just sports. I'm also going to be covering old school music, R&B and old school hip hop. I don't blame you, Mac. Today's hip hop. I don't blame you for not yeah. wanting to listen to it. But we're going to talk yeah. about yeah. the old school with the albums and stuff. And, you know, also, you know, like he said, I do comedy. So, you know, we'll be covering some Stanford and Son, some old school comedy movies and sitcoms and things of that nature. And... You know, I might just put on my own little impromptu show uh, talking about current events, whatever comes to mind. And we'll also deal with the diet thing and um, self-help, um, metaphysics as well. Um, whatever the topic is, I'll cover all of the gamut, anything that Straw has in my presentation, my expertise, and you know, whatever I want to dish out to y'all. Uh, we're going to use it uh, as a platform on the straw show as the subject matter to uplift the better uplifting of our people as Kwabana had us take the pledge, my brother. All right. So All right. Uh, we uh so do you wanna um do a few little impressions for us before we get started and go to the panel, see if they have some questions or comments for you? Uh that's fine. Any y'all wanna throw somebody out there? Anybody you know, have a request? Well, let me tell you something. If I ain't got a request, I'll just go ahead and do Charles Barkley. Let me tell you, All-Star Weekend was terrible. It was absolutely garbage, but we already knew they ain't been playing hard. You know, uh, they don't offer enough money. I mean, I was supposed to be in the dunk contest my first year, well, my second year in the league, well, my first year in the league, but I bowed out of it for, you know, different reasons. Um, That's too easy. That's too easy. That's too. I I got a challenge for you. You ready? Go ahead. I want you to do Barack Obama doing Louis Armstrong. <laughs> um. Okay. I'll give it a try. Um. I grew up listening to jazz, and one of my favorites was Satchmo Armstrong. My dad used to play an eight track, and he had songs on there like "We Shot Bite" and "It's Deep Dear." And he showed them early white, Max the Jack Knight, and Max he said, Oh, you say, away, Lady Maja, Suki Tasha, Lala Minier, Sweet Lucy Brown. I used to can do it better when I, I mean, was I said Obama doing Louis Armstrong. I didn't say Obama morphing into Louis Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the best I can do. <laughs> Impromptiness, but I like Give me that. Jamon Wilson. <laughs> Good oh. job, man. Oh, come on, Pop. This is ridiculous. Look here, son, you big dummy. Oh, would you stop it? You're supposed to be on here doing a podcast and you're trying to make me look. I ain't got to try to make you look like no fool. You are the perfect fool. <laughs> I Not bad, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Is that okay, say, how about them cowboys on your t-shirt not at all Carter cowboys oh okay 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 I, I don't know if you you up on the on the Dallas Carter cowboys nah inform us oh man that's um trying to remember the name of that movie man 
Somebody sent it to you? Yeah, Patrick. I don't know who it is. Not Friday oh, night. Man. I don't well, they were on Friday night lights, but you know, uh I work at that school, but it was a couple other movies they made about their uh championship season or whatever. Oh okay. I coach basketball over there. Okay, nice, nice, nice. That's a sweet shirt. Now, you won't my you won't ever see me wear a Dallas Cowboys, my brother. No, okay. Hey. I want to offend no Cowboys fans. How about them Cowboys? I see my girl Man, Keith. I, I, I can rejoin the Cowboys when Bush Johnson rejoins the team. The California Quake. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Now, so, speaking so of brother, speaking. brother Pratt. Yeah. Let's kind of go around the horn. So let's let's start with uh, Professor Armin Rod. Professor Rod, you have any quests for any impressions or comments, or you want to ask him about his show that's that's coming up? I just, uh, first of all, I want to say appreciate what's been said, if I understand correctly. It's good to see you again, Brother Straw, and wishing you the best in your endeavor. Just a quick question, you know, how do you really see comedy as far as its meaning? I mean, uh, what 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 is the vision of comedy, and why did you get into comedy? And uh, cool question. I heard you ask why I got into it. And what was? Could you repeat that? The rest of it. Well, yeah. back. I said, what does? How do you define comedy? And why did you get into it? In oh. that, you know, and you know, um, you know, from the standpoint of what it means. Okay, I would define. That's a good question. I define comedy as anything. That's humorous, that make you laugh, make you feel good. It can um, bring a, a satire or a comedic light to a situation. And I got into it because I was doing it around the house and didn't know the name of it, uh, anything. I, I like laughter. I like watching comedies. And I used to like listening to comedians. And I figured, hey, I can do that. But I would just imitate other people and make people laugh even before I realized it. You know, it was something that I could choose to do myself. So I remember one time I made a, well, actually a friend of mine, they wrote a letter and they made a tape on each side, an audio cassette with him and his brother talking and they was clowning and bagging and doing all kinds of stuff on that tape. And that kind of influenced me as well because I did it back to them. And I sent my dad a letter one time and I had put, recorded, I wrote out my comedy act and, uh, I went through the whole act on each side and I turned the radio to some static. And every time I told the joker punchline, I turn up the volume like it was thousands of people cheering and stuff. So I made a little comedy take back then, but inspired by friends of mine who had sent a letter on audio cassette. So just little things like that, being creative and stuff, um, you know, making people feel good. I like making people feel good and putting a smile on their face. That's better than people being mad at you and frowning. So. You know, just a feel good type of guy, happy go lucky type of guy. So that's why it was easy for me to. So what, what about from the standpoint of the challenges of breaking through as a comedian? Uh, you know, you have the comedy store in Hollywood. You have one in Long Beach. You uh, have uh, various uh, platforms. They used to have one on uh, HBO. I forget where Bernie Mac them and all of them used to be. The on. Deaf Comedy Jam and stuff. Deaf Comedy Jam. So I mean, how challenging is it for uh, people to get into that type of um, recognition and, and and to get on those type shows, especially the comedy well, store? Well, it's definitely a grind. You know, I spent times going to the clubs and waiting for hours just to do five minutes or waiting for hours and being told that you're going to get on it and not even getting on at all. But you got to stay encouraged. You just network. You know, people see you out. You got to do shows for free. And at those shows, there'll be people scouting for shows that do pay. So, oh, man, I got this room out and such. So I want you to come do it. It pays this much. Okay, so you get that gig. So don't be discouraged by if you don't get, shoot, if I got paid doing these little spots around town, I felt good about it. I was lucky to get any gas money. But so I already knew that you do those little things to build up. Like I did Comic View twice and I got picked up by just doing open mic at Maverick Flat. And they saw me and AJ Joe Nace doing our thing and, you know, signed us up for Comic View. 
and we both did it on separately, even though we were working as a tandem. So the more it's just about networking and working on your craft. A comedian, Dean Austin, had a room in San Diego. You know, he put me on the little billboard and had me on there as the feature. He'd bring in comics every weekend or every Sunday, whatever. And he was giving me some good advice. He said, always do what you think is funny. Because if you, if you perform for the crowd, then it's going to be hard for you to be consistent because you're always trying to please them. And you're not going to commit to the joke because you're doing it for them. But if you do it, what you think is funny, even if it is not funny, you will commit to it and stay with it and tweak it and work with it till it is because you believe that that's funny. So always do comedy that you feel is funny. I said, OK, that's some good advice. Um, I never heard anyone say that before or since. And okay. I got two people I want you to impersonate. Okay. Stephen A. Smith and Pinky from Fridays. Uh, that, uh, that, uh, you know, uh, Ice Cube produced. You remember Pinky and uh, then uh, Stephen A. Smith, you know, and his sports program. All right, you guys, let's pull up to this liquor store. I got to get something to drink before we play this three on three. Yay, yay. Yo, pass that 40 over here too, boy. Y'all, yeah, man, good job doing drinking party. Y'all some malt liquor. You're supposed to drink this yak before you get out on the court. Good God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for crying out loud, pass the ball, man. I'm going to start the 21 game. I'm going to win this game. You guys ain't got no. Oh, you must didn't hear my album when I said I almost won a triple dub. That's just on a record, Ice Cube. You ain't got no game. Ah, oh, neither none of y'all got no game. Wait till you get the ball. Get the ball. I just, I just put him in the three on three situation. But, hey, that's a good premise. I had to work on that. Okay. That's all for I got right now. I'll be back later. I love it. I love it. If I box Thanks, it. Professor I... Rod. We're we going to go to Brother Machinda. Brother Machinda. Yo, what's up? How you doing? What's Brother up, Machinda? How you doing, man? How you doing? Creature in Machinda. <laughs> Look, it's amazing. You you know your talent is amazing in terms of. So describe from you know technically or scientifically like what's going on through your mind when you would say when you were doing Red Fox, you was doing Sanford and Son. You know how do you shift back into those characters? What's like what's actually going through your mind? You know like uh, that energy, that space that you're tapping into. You know I know it's something metaphysical. So is but that's real deep. Explain yourself. It's just, it's just, that's a question I've never been asked, but to attempt to answer it, I would say just watching all these shows, they all in my head. Uh, my brother's a Sanford and Son freak, so anytime it came on, we would um, chime in. And so I have all these shows in my head, and I just can pull them out depending on what situation comes up. You know, we got Fred. You got Grady, you got Esther. Esther, fool, oh, goob, 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 what's wrong with you? So, you know, anything anybody says, you know, just a regular conversation, I might, it might remind me of a, a line from a show and I just blurt out and, 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 and say, and people think I'm crazy. But hey, like one time I ran into um, uh, uh, Lawrence Hilton Jacobs and I got introduced to him and I didn't want to do Boom Boom Washington. So, I, I went up to him and said, just remember, it's my blood going through your veins, not Barry Gordon's. And he looked at me like I was crazy. I ain't care. I made myself laugh. Do it. <laughs> so I just have a reference of <clears throat> and I just pull it out as I see fit. And hopefully it's funny. So what is your show? What is your show going to be available? Uh, we're still working that out. I got my one of my producers on with me right now. He can chime in anytime you want and say we're lining up guests and stuff. Uh, it's going to be on M3 TV on this platform right now. Um, and we do have one show that's already up. You can see it on on demand. One little interview we did. And we're going to stack them up over there. And uh, I'm sure we'll have uh, some dates where we'll have a definite date where we'll come on like, you know, just like a, a, a sitcom every Tuesday. Every Friday, every Saturday, we'll, we'll figure all that out. Just stay tuned. Um, I have an, another platform coming on, Sue. I sent the link to one of my other producer guys, but uh, I don't think he got on yet. So 
So it's, it's it's all in the works. So shows like this is just help help keeping keeping the momentum going so we can fulfill this. Because a lot of people want to want to see me on here. They see me doing this type of thing. And that, yeah. what's up, John? <laughs> no, I just wanted to get involved and ask you to do an impression. <laughs> no, go, go ahead. Because, uh, you know, I'm very impressed with uh, the fact that you are a clean comedian. I think that has to be more challenging than doing the typical you know, cussing about everything, black folks do this, white folks do that type thing. Uh, so I'm very impressed by that. But I just thought of something while we're sitting here and I am more impressed with your basketball knowledge. I, I don't think people <laughs> know enough about how you are so knowledgeable about the history of basketball. So I wanted to hear you have an argument between uh, Shaq <laughs> and Jimmy Walker over LeBron and Jordan, who's the GOAT. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Can you do that? I yeah. know you got to get sacked. In the world. Well, well, well. We got Shaquille O'Neal. Who you think is better out of Michael Jordan from Chicago and the LeBron James? Oh, that's something you should bring that up, JJ. First of all, I grew up watching you on TV. What you talking about? You wasn't old enough. You wasn't even old enough, Shaq. Well, there's sitcoms and there's reruns, there's syndication. That's true. That's true. I didn't get no money for that, though. You got all the money. Give it to me. I got to work on my JJ. But in the meantime, who you think is better? LeBron or Jordan? I'm taking Chicago. I'm going with my Jordan. <laughs> I figured you would because you're from Chicago. Folks, but you know, after LeBron broke the record, you got to give it to him. Ah, come on, that that record it ain't the same as when Kareem was playing. I mean, Kareem had this guy. Look, I even almost drew it to my posters with the long arms and stuff. Would I would have bought that and put it in my Shaq mansion. But anyway, Kareem came with the sky hook. They was playing more defense back then. You got to give it to him. Now it's too easy to score. You do make a point, but LeBron is all around, and LeBron is paying me to say LeBron. So. <laughs> Look, we will have this debate later about because <laughs> I'm I've I've switched sides, man. I'm Team LeBron at this point, but we'll talk Ooh. about that later. <laughs> Thank you for this part about the basketball stuff. I uh, should have told Brother Ross Roscani to to drill me on some stuff. You can even drill me on some stuff, you know, MVPs, Rookie of the Years, NBA champions, All Star, all that stuff in my head, you know, just automatically. It is categorized by school years, you know. It's easy to categorize it because you know the NBA season is like the school ski season. It starts in the fall, ends in the spring, so we get the summer off. So it's very easy to categorize certain things, like the '85, '86 season. And Jordan only played like 22 games, and he was hurt. And Dominique Wilkins led the league in scoring. And Boston played Houston and went six games in the championship. And the All Star game was in Dallas, and the MVP was Isaiah Thomas. And the East beat the West for the second year in a row, and maybe in the third year in a row. And it was four years in a row. Said they won like six straight All Star games. The last time they won was 1979 when David Thompson was the MVP up in Detroit. In '80, George Gervin was the MVP in Capital Center. In '81, it was Tiny Archibald in Cleveland. In '82, it was Larry Bird in the Brendan Byrne Arena. In '83, it was at the Forum with Marvin Gaye Sunday National Anthem. And the MVP was Julius Irving, even though I thought it should have been Sidney Moncrief. He had more all around stats. In '84, it was Denver with Isaiah Thomas. '85, Ralph Sampson got it over in Indianapolis from the West. Finally broke the six game losing streak to the East. And then in 86, it went back to the East with Isaiah Thomas winning his second MVP in two seasons. Who else can do that? That's what I'm talking about. Who else can do that? Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> All right. Listen, listen, I want to go to Brother Thomas because Brother Thomas was uh was kind of napping on us. Brother Thomas, you up? Unmute. Thomas Hollywood Henderson from the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, Brother Thomas is is just uh, taking a nice little snooze. Oh man, <laughs> it's okay though. But uh, let's let's go to. I want to go to uh, uh, James Pratt, my brother, the okay. elder Pratt. <laughs> yeah, well, he he already knows what I want to hear. I want to hear one of the Star Trek characters that he does all the time for me. That's what he used to do. 
<laughs> we used to hang out, we watched the Star Trek, that he come on and say, imitating one of the stars, one of the characters on there uh, from the show we just got through watching, so. Scotty, Scotty, man, Mr. Chekhov, give me Warp Factor 5. Warp Factor 5 indeed, Captain. Star Fleet Command, wait till he hears about this. Mr. Sulu. Give me Very a nice. Warp Factor 5 indeed, Captain. <laughs> Doc, bones, damn it, Jim. Not gonna make it. It's that quadrophane hallucination. Spock, tell us something, Spock. Affirmative, Captain. Yeah, thank you. It's bored. Lord <laughs> have mercy. Done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Anything else, James? How about how about him? I can do him. Who? Brother, me? Hey, my no. Me? No, no. Yeah. I, I, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave. <laughs> All I'm gonna say is how you used to laugh after you would say something, even if you was mad. You were confused. That's all I was gonna say. So you're gonna talk about the time when my, my brother took my car. Oh no, I wouldn't even gonna bring it up. But you want me to bring it up? No, I don't know what else you wanted to the only one I could think of. Just That's anything. what I was really mad at. <laughs> what time I can remember? It could be anything casual, like, "Money, can I get ten dollars?" No, <laughs> no. <laughs> and he's laughing after he says it, so I wasn't sure if he was serious or not. He says, "Are you, are you sure, man?" No, you can't have it. <laughs> and he's chuckling after he says no. He's being firm, but he's laughing at the same time, so it kind of confused us and stuff. <laughs> That's all. He just had a little idios idiosyncrasy like that, but he was into Star Trek, and I was too young to get it. My favorite episode, he said, oh, that's the worst one, about the little tribbles. And then when I got up and got into him, I said, wow, I called him up and said, you're right, that was the worst episode. <laughs> you know why? It was for kids. That's why I liked it when I was little. But the, it wasn't deep like the rest of them. When I got old, I said, yeah, that was shallow compared to the rest of them. So, yeah. The, well, how many episodes did they have of Star Trek? You're trying, they you, you, oh, you, you're, you're putting me on the, on the thing. I just know it was for three and a half seasons. I can't remember mm -hmm. how many episodes because of the original, because you yeah. know you start blending until the other, you know, the other five different series they had after that. So oh, you're not. <laughs> I'm just talking about these of the of the Starship Enterprise. Oh. <laughs> you know, when Captain Kirk could beam down to a planet and get it on with some blue or green woman. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even like when they made him made him kiss Lieutenant Uhura. I'm like, nah, don't do that. Nah, nah, nah. Gene Roddenberry. I'm like, at least he had her on there because Lieutenant Uhura was representing for the sisters. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I want to go to uh, uh, Mac. And Mac, I want you to talk about your, your basketball league, too. Okay. Uh, well, it's the American Basketball League. We begin in well, now we, we're beginning in May, and um, you guys are kind of getting the scoop because I haven't even announced on the website, I haven't made the official announcement that, you know, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have the teams host a weekend tournament. Um, and this way, you know, everybody has to travel one time to the other place and they get more games in as opposed to just playing one game and leaving. And... Uh, so this way everybody gets to play more games uh we'll be i haven't figured it out yet but we'll probably have just about every game on the network m3 tv and uh which you know uh pratt's going to be on there with his show uh, and as far as as far as pratt and i want to just throw something out there as far as his show he and i will get together and figure out when we're gonna uh when we're gonna air it you know, he's get he's doing what he has to do. I'm trying to do what I have to do here. And, you know, maybe by the end of the week, we'll come up with some kind of plan. But uh, back to the league, we're going to have six, maybe seven teams. Uh, one in San Diego, uh, two in the San Antonio area, a place called New Braunfels. In fact, I live in New Braunfels. Uh, we're going to have a team in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, uh, Palm Beach, Florida, and, and Houston, Texas. And we might be getting a team in uh, Louisiana, somewhere in the Lafayette area. 
So uh, this league is primarily for guys who need a second chance. And if not a second chance, they're just looking for another platform because, you know, they weren't good enough to continue on to college or, you know, they had their college career and they haven't quite made it overseas or, you know, to that next level. So uh, we're the path less traveled, but uh, we're going to be able to get guys, you know, um, to the next level, whatever that level is for them. But we're going to help them take that quantum leap. Quantum so, Leap, and at a show on so, CBS back in 1990. So these are these are young guys coming out of college. Yeah, we're not looking for D1 or even D2. I mean, we won't turn them away, but you know, they have overseas, they have the G League. This is more for guys, you know, D3 or you know, NAI, JUCO, you know, like that. Uh, because there's a lot of talent out there that's untapped. You know, people, you know, people just kind of leave them by the wayside. And they've got all this talent and no one to perform for, you know. So uh, the other thing, uh, now, if you notice, you didn't hear me use the term professional in any part of my description of the league, and that's on purpose. Um, our professional league is going to be over in Trinidad. And uh, that'll be ABL Trinidad. And so we can almost guarantee that everybody who comes to our league will get to play. You know, for, I mean, we'll call it overseas, you know, and um, it's going to be sort of a, a foreign exchange student program kind of thing where uh, our players, some of our best players will go over there. Some of their best players will come over here. Now, in each league, there's two different objectives, all right? When our players go over there, I mean, because see, everybody thinks the United States players are still the best, all right? So we're going to send some of our best over there. Uh, it's entertainment for the folks over in Trinidad, but it's also, you know, giving these guys a chance to be leaders and show other players what they know, all right? So it's not just about playing ball, it's about personal growth too you know this is what I got I want to show it to you you know uh when those players come over here they feel like they're coming to the mecca of basketball the United States so everybody's pretty much getting something out of it we're going to send some of our coaches over there to help teach the coaches how to be better coaches and I'm sure that those American coaches are going to come away feeling like they're better for the experience because I'm sure that those guys over there will teach the American coaches something. So <laughs> everything's going to be surrounded by around uh, education as well as opportunity. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, we have. Happy we have birthday. A, what's that? Happy birthday. Uh, Dr. J's birthday today. Yes, yes. it is. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Now, now you Barkley just had one. Yeah, well, we got a lot of birthdays. Let's start off with Marcus Johnson on the eighth. I found yeah. a lot of players wear jersey numbers for their birth date. Then we had uh, Michael Jordan, seventeenth, the same day as Jim Brown and Huey P. Newton, and my comedian comrade PB Smiley. Then you got a Barkley, like you said, on the twentieth. Stephon Marbury on the twentieth. Stephen Francis on the twenty-first. And the doc on the 22nd, worth is on the 25th. February is big. <laughs> Isn't Connie Hawkins' uh, birthday in February? It might be too. Bill Russell earlier this month. Let me see. Connie might, I might have missed Connie's, but it ain't too late. I put them up. I put hey. birthday a few days afterwards. You know me. <laughs> hey, Troy Benton on the 16th, Curtis Moore on either the 16th or the 17th, one of them. Curtis Moore. My, yeah. My guy. But my guy Reggie McCoy from Banning High Schools was yesterday. <laughs> All and my was last week. Okay, no, nah, Connie Hawkins is July 17th. Is it July? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I got I got a Zoom user on here. And then also, I guess they left. Now the Zoom user. I'm still, I'm still on here. This is Linda Shorter. I'm still on. Hey Linda, how you hey. doing? Do you do you do you like you like comedy? Yes, I love comedy. I, I'm enjoying this and listening. 
Okay, oh, you got any? You got any requests for him? I I, I was surprised when he did um, on Estate um, because I thought he only. <laughs> did. Can you do any other women? Well, I already did Esther fool. Yeah, yeah, Esther. <laughs> do some different ones. How about Brand Brand Drescher? I like. Oh I like goodness. her. A lot of people don't like her voice, but I love her voice, especially in Dr. Detroit. Oh, nice legs, nice tushy. Don't <laughs> hit it, Tammy. <laughs> I love her voice. <laughs> um, and then your name, Linda, reminds me of Linda Lavin on Alice. There's a new girl in town. She didn't have no distinct voice, but her, her, her co-worker did. Well, kiss my grin. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> One of Linda Lavin from New York, I always thought she was either a Brooklynite or from Long Island. She had a distinct accent. Yeah, she kind of did, but I didn't, I guess I didn't really mess with her too much. I should have. She did have a nice little accent. Yeah. And I used, to, I used to like her little scat singing on the intro. Boom, 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 boom. I said, oh, she <laughs> Wait a minute, man. What is that voice you just did? It was, that was distinctive. Who is that the, voice again? The woman? Yeah. Whoever that uh, was. That was Linda uh, Lavin. Ah, uh, you're talking about Karen Catering Blitzky. Talking about that one? I think that was, man. And whatever voice, it was like you changed. I couldn't, man, that was amazing. <laughs> I don't know how you do this stuff. That like, was amazing. He didn't hear me. <laughs> Uh, oh man okay let, let's go to uh kathy kathy hi How you <laughs> doing? welcome back we ain't Thank seen you in a while i know i lost all my contacts and everything so the phone does not recognize nothing everything is on my fire stick but anyway i'm glad i put um brother machinda you know tell me to jump on and i'm liking what i'm hearing tell them to do um Tell them to do um, good times. That's the role. Oh, oh my. Damn, damn, damn. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be entertained. Well, mom, I ain't got no money. That's all right. Fine, did JJ. <laughs> <laughs> I was about was to ask you to do Walona. Oh. Because mm, I know that eBay, he sure is fine. Mm, booger. <laughs> Get on those good buffalo butt. <laughs> y'all bringing me back. Make me y'all gonna make me pop in some of these old shows, man. Um, what you know uh, the theme songs I used to like doing too, and a lot of theme songs or sitcoms bring me back. I was living in the Bay Area when Welcome Back Cowdy was out, and um, Laverne and Shirley. So every time I hear those intros and extras, it reminds me of. You know, being in elementary school, about to go to bed. Maybe we can stay up and watch one more sitcom. Bloom, 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 bloom. We're going to do it. Schlemiel, Schlemazel, Hawson. <laughs> and where can we find two patsies like this? Um, hello, hello. Um, yes, me and. <laughs> and then. Hey, let, Rose me ask you, let me ask you this, man. Let me ask you this. Uh, you started talking about some of the the jingles, you know, the theme songs. Isn't that missing today? I mean, why don't we have that in TV today, man? Kid me, sitcoms is gone, man. Sitcoms have been gone. Even when they were on their last legs, there were a lot of recycled topics and, you know, just a lot of tired stuff going on. Oh, uh, man. No, I mean, we used to be able to, I mean, I didn't do it, but I say we as a whole, People would sing along with Archie and E. You know what I mean? The Good Times, uh, the Good Times theme song. You know, and everybody knew the words or parts of the words. Guys like us, we had it made. Those were the days. Get that cigar. Get that cigar. I saw you. Uh, yeah, I, I like doing um, baby. If you've ever wondered. Wondered whatever became of yeah, yeah. I'm living on the air in Cincinnati, Cincinnati, <laughs> KRB. Got tired of, tired of packing and unpacking, round and round, up and down the dial. Maybe 
for me were never meant to be, but maybe we can see once in a while. I'm at WK <laughs> in Cincinnati. Oh man, they was harmonized. Right? They should have yep. at least sing. I'd have been playing on K Day. <laughs> and now I got to ask you to be this fly trap character. Fly trap with the Midnight Hour. I mean, he was early on as one of them fly jock DJs. <laughs> In this fly trap right here, and we got Johnny Fever coming up on the late hour. But right now, <laughs> Michael Franks. Ray, <laughs> baby looks like Miles. If he looked like Miles, uh oh. Betty wants to know the reason why. Because Lady wants to know. All right, I'm going into a whole nother thing. <laughs> yes, indeed. Michael Franks that's, concert. That's Let's uh, excuse me. Let's get a let's get a couple of other people in here. Let's get another uh, brother Henry. Big Joe. Uh, I ain't too much on the comedy thing. Uh, I got a <laughs> students that are comics. Uh, Leslie Jones is one of mine from Linwood. Big and, Leslie. Yeah, and uh, Edwanda White. She's one of mine too from Linwood, and another. Oh. Uh, his name is Mario White. He's called a blind comic. Okay, well, Wanda's the home girl. Yeah, I mean, we work a lot together. Oh, Mario, the blind comic. I'm gonna have to ask her about him. Yeah, he's, sure. he's a Linwood guy also. Okay. Uh, I had some other pressing stuff that's non comical. No, no, we covered many different aspects. Shoot, brother, shoot. Uh, this, uh, down in Harris County Jail in Houston over the last two and a half months, 50 some odd black people have been killed and hadn't even been to court yet. 32 last month, 22 the month before that, and four this month. Uh, I got the clip a brother sent me uh, and I was talking to one of my former players who was played for the Houston Oilers who lives in Houston. And every Friday he plays this big poker game. And there's a couple of gentlemen who work in the Harris County jail that are in that poker group. A, a jailer and also a, a, a lieutenant. Uh, okay. 50 some odd people in two and a half months been killed before they even got to court, which is alarming. Wow. On the comic yeah. side, I want you to, I want, well, I want to ask you, what's the difference between being an impersonator and a comic? And then I have one person I want you to impersonate if you can. But what's the difference? Well, comedians don't always do impressions. And then an impressionist, you know, might rely on just doing impressions and might not have, you know, uh, uh, regular material. And just do impressions. I like to like blend them both. I know some people that do impressions that don't like to be called an impressions because they don't want to be put in a box. So, you know, you, you could just say comedian and that does impressions as well. So that's pretty much the difference. But I like to blend them both. I don't want to just rely on impressions. I like to talk about like Richard Pryor covered covered uh, a lot of topics, and I thought he was a social comic, and he did a few impressions. But you know, <clears throat> I like to be a comic like that. You know. Okay, well, this is one I want you to impersonate for me if you can. Mom's Mabley. Oh. <laughs> hey, watch it. Nice. I don't the only clip I've seen. It was an old man. A oh, 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 man. He was older than water. Mom's <laughs> 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 was one of my favorites. I'm going to have to listen to some more. Yeah, she, uh, when I was in junior high school, when she was really on it at that time. Yeah. No, definitely. Uh, yeah, man, uh, I've been knowing you a long time. I've been waiting for you to get your big break. I see your pictures around in different establishments time to time. Uh, Appreciate it. Yeah, I remember working with you when you was always wearing the Afrocentric gear and stuff. I said, yeah, that's tight right there. Look here. Uh, I want you to do a, if you can think of one right quick, 
you know, because I, I used to see you at Mom's Burger all the time. Uh -huh. so, let me hear you be a frustrated customer because Mom's is closed now. If you oh. <laughs> I thought you was going to say be a frustrated customer because Mom's be sometimes taking along with your orders. <laughs> the way you want to do it. Okay. Come on, man. I called it in. What, what I need to call it in for if y'all still going to take all day? This fool just walked up and made his order and getting it before me. Come on, y'all. Got to get back to work. Hurry up. Miss my, I miss Mom's Burgers. Why'd you have to bring them up, man? I saw Donald at a funeral. He said he's not going to open up anymore, so. Aww. Yeah, I, I figured if it took this long, they wasn't going to do it, but they start making veggie tacos, so I'd get those with some fries. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, he had a good business for a long That was his parents' business. Yeah, I see the lady up there. I can tell that was from back in the day. Yeah. Is this out in LA? In Compton. It's Compton. It's near the intersection of Alondra and Oleander. Yeah, they, they came, that they, they couple came to see me uh do some comedy at the Stevie Mac show one time in Lamert. So oh, okay. appreciate it. Okay. I don't yeah. like that, brother. Carry on. All right, appreciate you, Joe. Alert. Much love, brother, big brother. <laughs> Okay, uh, I want. I think Professor Ra had a little bit more he wanted to, to ask you. Professor Ra, you there? Got to unmute if you're there. Yeah, I'm here. So, did you I have anything else? I wanted to do pig meat Martin. Ah oh, man, I got to I got to study you. I'm gonna get on it for next time. <laughs> I'm sure, probably know what that is. Did that here come the judge? Yeah, yeah, you see my wife? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> yes, you see my wife? I yeah, remember seeing a little bit of that maybe on the Flip Wilson show or something. Yeah. What do a Richard Pryor? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Depends on which one of the will come to the top of my head.